From United Nations headquarters in New York, I'm Luke Vargas. O2016, oh, what a year it's been, and we've had it all. From conflict to conflict resolution, a U.S. election that crowded out almost every other story, including major military campaigns in the Middle East. But just because Donald Trump squeezed out a headline doesn't mean it was important. So let's separate what matters from what doesn't and isolate the top headlines from 2016 that will matter next year. And we start in Latin America, where a decade-long period of rule by left-wing leaders in Argentina, Brazil, and Venezuela is drawing to an end. It started in 2015 in Argentina, with the election of the business-minded conservative Maurizio Macri ending more than a decade of rule by the Kirchners. In Brazil, welfare champion Dilma Rousseff was impeached, and in Venezuela, the legacy of Hugo Chavez hasn't been enough to help Nicolas Maduro whether a crashing currency, an electricity crisis, and rising discontent. A recall effort against Maduro could come to a climax next year. Meanwhile, in Africa, a number of leaders have dug in their heels and refused to cede power at the ends of their presidential terms, causing what many see as a crisis for democracy on the continent. Uganda's Yoweri Museveni elbowed his way into a fifth term as president after the abolition of term limits. There are ongoing crises in the Gambia and the Democratic Republic of the Congo over whether their leaders will step down as well. And Burundi and South Africa left the International Criminal Court in 2016, alleging the court has an imperialist anti-Africa bias. Kenya says it may leave as well, meaning the ICC will remain under threat in 2017. Saudi Arabia has been acquiring weapons for years, but it stepped out as a military actor in 2015 with its military intervention in Yemen. That war raged on in 2016 amid repeated reports that Saudi weapons hit civilian targets. But political condemnations and a U.S. move to stop providing precision-guided weapons to the Saudis haven't changed the Saudi calculus. Will Saudi Arabia continue its campaign in Yemen in 2017? And will the Saudi royal family and major financiers in the country stop funding extremist groups and Syrian rebels? We'll see in 2017. In response to a more aggressive military posture by Russia, countries across Eastern Europe successfully pushed NATO to deploy new forward battalions to the region, and military spending has increased across the Baltic and Poland. Another NATO battalion will be formed near the Black Sea in Romania. Russia, meanwhile, has placed anti-air systems and nuclear-capable missiles in its Baltic exclave of Kaliningrad as east-west tensions continue to build. In July, a court in The Hague ruled that China was illegally occupying islands and water belonging to the Philippines in the South China Sea. The court further took issue with the nine Dash line, a document from the 1940s that sets out China's supposed historical claims over vast parts of that sea. For a moment, it looked like international law and multilateralism might help resolve the dispute in the South China Sea. But that was until Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte struck bilateral deals with China and spurned U.S. assistance. Then Donald Trump's election dashed hopes of seeing the TPP resurrected, a free trade deal that could have allowed the Philippines, Vietnam, and others to effectively counter China. Temporarily humiliated on the issue of the South China Sea, China has deployed more military assets to the region and once again looks to be in control. The impact of low oil prices can be felt almost everywhere you look. In oil-producing countries, the low price of the commodity has stretched state budgets. And just as Iran hoped to start exporting tons of oil to make up for lost time during their period of sanctions, a global gut has put the country at odds with perennial adversary Saudi Arabia, which wants to slow down production. If prices don't rise, the Saudi economic situation could worsen, and the same goes for Russia, Venezuela, and Nigeria, the clear examples of where the low price of oil has had significant political consequences. June's Brexit referendum didn't just put Great Britain on a path to a long, painful divorce from the European Union or force the resignation of David Cameron, but the surprising result of the vote excited the aspirations of anti-EU political movements across Europe, in France, in Italy, in Germany. Next year will likely bring more of the same. The EU has fallen abysmally short of its plan to resettle refugees across the continent, meaning that issue will linger on unsettled and a number of elections in major countries present a great opportunity for anti-EU nationalist parties to gain further influence. 
Just days before the U.S. election, world leaders gathered here at the United Nations in New York to mark the implementation of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. More than 100 countries, representing 80 percent of the global emissions, are signed on to that deal. The deal not only asks countries to hit emissions reduction targets, but instructs wealthy nations to transfer technology to poorer nations to help them adopt renewable energy sources so they can keep growing economically without growing as emitters. The U.S. and China emerged as global leaders in climate politics, and that would have clearly continued under a President Hillary Clinton. The future of the Paris Agreement now looks uncertain, opening the door for China to take over global climate leadership and perhaps the export of renewable energy for years to come. Russia began its military intervention in Syria in 2015, but 2016 saw Russian and Syrian interests in the country increasingly overlap. What some speculated would be a short Russian intervention has now become a sustained operation, with Russian military assistance key in this month's recapture of the previously rebel-held city of Aleppo. Turkey also launched a ground campaign in Syria. In its sixth year, the Syrian war has become a global affair, and that has been enabled by a blurring of the conflict. Russia, Iran, Hezbollah, and Syria say they're fighting terrorists. So does the U.S., so do the Turks. And over the border in Iraq, terrorists also come in all shapes and sizes. As the Islamic State loses ground in Iraq and rebels lose ground in Syria, some of the world's major militaries will have to decide in 2017 whether their enemies' enemies are actually their friends. Without a doubt, Donald Trump's election has been the most consequential foreign policy development in 2016. Trump is setting the U.S. on course to have an uneasy relationship with China, be it on issues of trade, currency manipulation, or the one China policy with Taiwan. A change in policy toward Russia also seems likely. If the U.S. ends sanctions slapped on Russia for its annexation of Crimea, how will Vladimir Putin respond? Then there's the future of climate negotiations, the possible expansion of the U.S. military. Trump will make decisions on the future of U.S. surveillance, the use of torture, the operation of secret prisons, how to characterize terrorists and followers of Islam. Those decisions always come back to have an influence later on. And of course, in the world of foreign policy, it's often the stories you can't predict that have the greatest impact. Suffice it to say, adding in an unpredictable Donald Trump could mean he'll be right back at the top of this list next year. From UN headquarters in New York, I'm Luke Vargas.